Queen's Gambit, which follows chess prodigy Beth Harmon, has captivated viewers and critics alike, leading to a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and a devoted fan following as well, as, of course, an increased demand for chess sets. Well, seven episodes was just not enough and fans are already demanding more action. Will there be a second season? Stick around to find out more as compiled by Riveted. In the last episode, we see Beth reunite with childhood friend Jolene after hitting rock bottom in her struggle with addiction to tranquilizers and alcohol. Yet after attending the funeral for her first chess tutor, Mr. Scheibel, Beth gets sober and attends the 1968 Tournament of Champions in Moscow. It is here she faces a rematch with rival Borgov for the title of World Chess Champion. The highlight of the episode is not Beth's final match, but rather her increased self-confidence and trust in those around her. This is apparent in the scene where her friends and former opponents, Towns, Benny, and Beltic, rush to call her and offer their support and advice on how to beat Borgov. Fresh from her victory, the last scene depicts Beth missing her flight back home. And as she sits down to start a game, Beth ends the series by taking off her gloves, smiling, looking straight into the camera and saying, let's play. With her final match mirroring her first game with Mr. Scheibel, Beth comes full circle. She has battled her demons, accepted support from others, and is finally at peace with herself, playing chess simply for the fun of it. In all honesty, the ending was quite fulfilling, but considering it's a fictional story, nothing is impossible. Heck, Stranger Things was only supposed to last for one season, and we're already at season four. Based on initial fan and critical reception to Queen's Gambit, you wouldn't be surprised to see Beth Harmon dominating chess tournaments in another season. The Queen's Gambit is unparalleled in its pacing, offers clever observations about gender politics, shines in its character development, paints a quiet and devastating portrait about addiction, and manages to make chess downright exciting. These are arcs that definitely deserve to be explored further. On paper, it would seem like an unlikely move considering the series used all the material from Tevis's novel and it would need to consult his estate for any extension of the story. But while there may be no official plans for a second season, the cast and crew are open to the possibility of further exploring Beth's journey. Some of the comments that the cast members have given are actually giving fans hope that another season could be on the way. In particular, Anya Taylor-Joy told Town & Country that she wouldn't be opposed to reprising the character of chess prodigy Beth Harmon. While talking about the possibility of a second season, Taylor-Joy said, if I've learned anything from being in this industry, it's never say never. I adore the character, and I would certainly come back if I was asked to. But I do think we leave Beth in a good place. I think the rest of her life will surely be an adventure as well. But in the quest that she goes on in this to find some form of peace, just some form of being able to be happy with who she is, I think it ends in a nice place. Melling, who plays Harry Beltic, also said that he would be on board for another season, as he told Town & Country. It'd be good, right? A Queen's Gambit Part 2? The place we end in the limited series is the place we end in the book. I don't know if there can be another one, but stranger things have happened, with the cast seemingly on board to jump back into their roles as chess pros and prodigies, and with the Queen's Gambit consistently hovering near the top of the Netflix charts ever since it debuted in late October, there seems to be a fair chance the streamer might greenlight a second season of the show. In the series, Beth learns to love herself as an individual, which positively affects her friendships and overall demeanor. Moving forward, she'll need to further address her complicated past in order to have a healthy romantic relationship. Beth and Harry Beltic parted on bad terms when she responded cruelly to his urgent plea that she stop drinking, but they mended fences when Harry came to Beth's aid during the adjournment of her final match. As for Benny Watts, his and Beth's sexual encounter ended in disconnect and disappointment, but their friendship and chemistry endured to the end of the series. If The Queen's Gambit Season 2 does happen on Netflix, expect Harry and Benny to compete for Beth's heart during an early to mid-70s timeline. There's also the matter of Towns, Beth's longtime crush who made a surprise appearance at the Moscow Invitational. In their youth, Beth and Towns had an awkward moment when Towns' boyfriend walked in on them during a romantically charged chess match, leading Beth to flee in embarrassment and assume that her crush was misplaced. However, in Moscow, Towns confessed that his feelings for Beth were more complicated than she had fully understood. Some fans have speculated that Towns is, in fact, bisexual and that a romantic future with him could still be possible for Beth. Whether Beth pursues one of her existing suitors or meets someone new, there's still plenty of story to explore about her love life. Other than that, there's still a lot of psychological trauma that Beth hasn't completely overcome. Season 1 leaves Beth in a place where she's overcome her demons and defeated her greatest rival, along with her to reach a measure of hard-won self-love. Queen's Gambit is, however, peppered with flashbacks to Beth's traumatic childhood with her mom, who suffered from mental illness. After she was adopted from the orphanage as a young teenager, Beth's cruel adoptive father walked out on the family, while her adoptive mother died suddenly and tragically a mere handful of years later. Beth hasn't fully lived through these experiences, and season two would be a great place to continue with the healing. As for Beth's career, what heights are there yet to ascend when Beth has already unseated the number one chess player in the world? Well, we're sure they'll find a way to keep that chess spirit burning. As much as fans are hoping for a second season, some weight lies towards not producing one. The series was initially billed as a limited series, which is why there are no current plans for season two. Of course, it's not unheard of for a limited series to be renewed, a case in point being HBO's highly rated Big Little Lies. 
Big Little Lies is perhaps the highest profile example. It was originally conceived as a one-off limited series based on the book of the same name by Leanne Moriarty. It was eventually renewed for a second season, adding an unknown actress named Meryl Streep to the cast. And Nicole Kidman recently said that ideas for a potential season three were being discussed. Surely some story about Beth's chess future and entanglement with those little green pills could fuel another round of The Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit is also based on a book which has no sequel. Throughout seven episodes, The Queen's Gambit stays true to the source material. Beth evolves into a world-class chess player and then suffers a major setback after the death of a loved one. Well, some of the things from the book were changed, which means that Netflix could continue the story without source material. For instance, the book only includes a brief paragraph regarding the death of Beth's mother, Alice, before immediately transitioning into the orphanage setting. Conversely, the adaptation spends a long time with Alice in flashbacks, a change that puts a little more context into Beth's underdog story and allows the writers to more vividly illustrate her personal demons. In the book, Alice dies in a car accident while Beth is at home, without suicide even being mentioned. However, in the series, Alice attempts to kill both herself and Beth in a car accident after Beth's father refuses to help her. Another difference, Towns appears during the two scenes in the book, playing against Beth during her first chess tournament and later interviewing her in his hotel room. Both of these screens are included in the series. However, after these two scenes have taken place, in the book, Beth only wishes Towns might show up with the camera. While in the series, Towns and Beth actually do meet in Moscow. This meeting leads to a heartfelt discussion in which it's implied that Towns is either gay or bi, another change from the book. Cleo is also a new character introduced solely for the Netflix series, though she seems to be somewhat based on a character named Jenny Baines, who's only given a brief cameo in the book. Cleo is an artist from Paris who meets Beth while both are visiting Benny Watts in New York. Beth and Cleo later spend the night together during a tournament, with Beth waking up drunk and unprepared for her match against Borgoff, which has led to some theories about Cleo actually being a KGB spy. Also, in the final game in the Netflix series, it's vaguely similar to the one in the book, but there are a few stark changes. Most of the series' final game is taken from a drawn game played between Vasily Ivanchuk and Patrick Wolf in 1993, which began with an opening called The Queen's Gambit Accepted, but the two games differ around Move 37. The game in the book features Beth calculating a checkmate that involves her knight. In the series, she simply wins a few extra pieces, which is enough for Borgov to throw in the towel. While in the series, she wins by imagining the pieces on the ceiling as she did in her youth. In the book, she simply closes her eyes and is met with a lucid reconstruction of the position before her. So yes, there's room for a lot of changes in brand new material, if need be. The only problem is that if Netflix does move forward with The Queen's Gambit Season 2, new episodes probably won't release for several years. Frank would presumably consult with the estate of Tevis, who passed away in 1984 at 56, and if he ends up writing his own scripts for The Queen's Gambit Season 2, the new installment may not release for three to five years. Well, even if the show does manage to get picked up for the future episodes, it'll be hard to imagine when their lead actress will have time to film them. And speaking to Marie Claire, Taylor Joy admitted she's been working nonstop and has already begun her next project, Robert Eggers' The Northman. She's also set to star in the Mad Max Fury Road prequel. Unfortunately, the creators also believe that they have reached the end of the road. Executive producer William Horberg said that they might end up leaving the future of the series up to fans' imaginations. He said, We've had a lot of fun talking about what happens tomorrow. The last scene feels like a beautiful note to end the show on, so I'm not sure if we want to go on and answer that question. Maybe we can just let the audience imagine what comes next. The writer-director Scott Frank seems especially thrilled with his work telling EW, This was the single best experience I've had in a 30-some-odd-year career full of really nice experiences. I have no idea how people are going to take it, but it's the first time I'm willing to admit just how happy I am. Normally, I'm afraid to ever say that. Some fans also believe that a second season is wholly unnecessary, as Beth's journey is now complete. Any continuation of Beth's story would only serve to harm the strength of the show's ending and Beth's narrative arc. After all, if there's anything we can learn from Beth's journey, it's that any chess player needs to learn when to play on and when to resign with grace. So what do you think? Should Netflix consequently resist the temptation to capitalize on the success of The Queen's Gambit and leave the series as it is? Or should they continue the story? Let us know where you stand in the comment section below. This has been Riveted.